Hello, my friends. Let's talk about High Score Girl. High Score Girl is a lot of things. It is at once a shameless marketing gimmick for a number of modern releases about to hit the shelves. It is a celebration of the culture and history of the retro arcade scene, a social space that has rapidly changed in Japan and all but died in Western countries like the U.S. and Canada. But to anyone's surprise. This show is also a remarkably well-told romantic comedy that skillfully executes on its plot and story beats in a way that few stories ever accomplish. Now, this show isn't a laugh-a-minute comedy in the vein of Konosuba, nor is it as romantic and saccharine a show like Kimi ni Todoke. But more so than any show I watched in 2018. High Score Girl wasted zero percent of my time as a viewer. Brevity is the soul of wit, but entertainment is often described as a piece of media's ability to retain attention for as long a period of time as possible. Services like Netflix release entire shows at once, knowing that the immediate gratification of the next episode is more likely to keep viewers than banking on weekly habituation for most shows. YouTube essentially demands a video length greater than 10 minutes from most content creators to have any potential. For significant views, and thanks to the mere exposure effect and the sunk cost fallacy, a piece of media that is bad can actually convince that it must be good if you spend enough time getting familiar with it. High Score Girl is essentially broken up into three arcs: the elementary school arc, the middle school arc, and the graduation and entrance exam arc. Each being about three or four episodes long. The emotional buildup and the payoffs of the first arc are established in a conclusive yet foreshadowing manner, and in a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure-esque fashion, moves immediately to the next impactful era of the main character's life with no fluff or filler. The competing love interest has her own emotional development that even has its own conclusion separate from the primary romantic dynamic. But if I could point to anything to indicate the show's emphasis on brevity, it would be the end of episode eight. The two main characters, Haruo and Ono, are currently on the annual school trip and snuck away from their class to participate in a fighting game tournament for Super Street Fighter 2. When they are coincidentally caught by a fellow classmate, exposing their somewhat secret relationship, this classmate also happens to be a romantic rival, also vying for Ono's attention. Not that Haruo is cognizant enough to realize any of this. When confronted to explain his relationship, he does so in the best way he knows how, through the lens of his obsessive gaming hobby. This sportsman-esque approach to all relationships portrays Ono as Haruo's superior, his goal, and a person who shares his values. This mentality eclipses thoughts of romantic love, yet still expresses them. In Japanese culture, nuance and intuition are social expectations. So much so that it is built into the language itself. Once established, both the subject and the object of a sentence can be dropped from speech, and it is expected at times to have a fluent conversation. English does the same, but with less frequency, and it is never seen as ineloquent to always use the subject-verb-object structure in English speech. This highly intuitive culture often means the strong emotions, like love or anger, are rarely expressed directly. One of the ways love is expressed is with the word akogareru, which means to admire. And even without the express use of the words akogare no hito, Haruo expresses the exact feeling about Ono. So the classmate, hearing this and seeing that Ono reciprocates those feelings from seeing the two wearing the same T-shirt in the hallway, is all the information he needs to see that there is no room for him to intrude on this dynamic. The classmate suggests they head back to their dorm and smash cut to the end credits. No extra fanfare, no lingering on facial expressions, or an intense, dour whisper of the classmate's name. Everything that needed to be said was said. The evolution of the main character's relationship growth was established as the new normal, while the story of the romantic rival was brought to a conclusion. And since everything was said that needed to be, the episode ended immediately. 
The entire scene completes in a mere 1 minute and 10 seconds. High Score Girl is a lot of things at once. As a romantic comedy and coming-of-age story, it is extremely ambitious in its goal of covering three distinct periods of growth and change in a standard 12-episode format. To meet this, these extremely short yet wholly well-rounded and purposeful moments litter the series in every episode, and, as a result, end up setting a new bar for this kind of story. Thank you for watching, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, by all means, please hit the like button. This is still a small channel, and the like button is the single most effective way we have right now to get the video out in front of other people who might be interested in it. If you'd like to see philosophical analyses of video games and anime come out every week, please also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any of them. I hope to see you next week, thank you again, and remember, stay true.